Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. I'm the creator of the Divi Events Calendar. Today I'd like to introduce version 2.5 with a lot of new features and improvements. Let's take a look. As always, we are relentless in giving updates. We are continuing to work on this full time and we're actively um, adding new features. So the first feature we're gonna talk about is in the events feed. So let's talk about features in the events feed module. And the first one is the image aspect ratio. So now you can set this to, you know, square or 16.9 or 3.4 or 2.3, whatever. So right here I have it actually set to uh, 16.9, um, but you could change it so that they're, you know, vertical or square, whatever you want to do there. Now we also have this new thing to make the entire event clickable. And normally, you know, if you're in here, you can click this title, you can click on the image, or this more info button. But what if you wanna click like right here, right here, right? So the new setting allows you to make this entire event, so each individual event here uh, will be clickable. It becomes the hyperlink to go to the single event page. That's a setting you can enable. Also now you can show past and future events in the feed. So we used to just have future or past and you had to use different modules. Now you can show both in the same module if you want to. Um, here's an improvement. So basically, in the past, if you were to use the uh, grid layout and you did not have an image, so notice how the, the callout box is over top of the image, right? Well, what would happen if, if you didn't have the image, then the callout box wouldn't show because it was kind of dependent on the image. So what we've done is we've made it like in this screenshot where the callout box will still show. And of course, that's um, optional with settings, whether you want that to show or not. Now in the events calendar module, we have a lot of new features. So the first one is showing thumbnails in the calendar days. Now by default, the image always showed in the tooltip when you hover, right? But now you have the option to show the image right here in this view. So you can see right now what that looks like. I just enabled it um, and there you go. Pretty cool that you can do that. Now there are also some things related to the time. So um, in the calendar here, notice how we always show the time above the title, right? And so what we've done is we had like when you have in the tooltip, we have the time also. Then we have date and time format settings for that, but we didn't have a time format for this. So what we've done is allow you to set the time format for the time here in the calendar. So in the builder here, you can see this time format setting here. Now we also have a couple more here. Hide time for all day events. Now this is on by default and also hide time for multi-day events. That's on by default. And what that means is when you have an event that is like all day, it'll say all day event. Well then, it's not really a time, is it? You know what I mean? It's it's You may wanna show that, um, but if you wanna hide that, then just hide that with the setting. Or same with multi-day, so it's like, if the time is, you know, 12 a.m. on this 27th to 11.59 on the 29th, that could be a little confusing um, with a multi-day event. So you may just want to hide it, right? You may just want to hide the time altogether since it's multi-day. Um, that's totally up to you, but those settings are added. We also added a lot of margin and padding settings. You can see these, but they are mostly over here, like in the days of the week, for example. So like right here, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Now you can adjust the padding. There you can see that I am adjusting that. Um, so that's new, it's a new one, and that's in the days of the week. Also in the navigation buttons, that's these up here. So I could, I'll just put in a crazy number just so you can see it, right? See that right there? Um, also in the view buttons, which is these over here, we have margin and padding for these also. So I could just, you know, add some values here to play around with it. You get the idea. And also in the actual calendar days right here. So we added the padding for that right here as well. Let's see, so tooltip image alignment, we've added, so here you can set the alignment for the details image, that's for the tooltip. Now, obviously alignment would only apply if the image is a certain width, if it's smaller, you'd have to make it a lot smaller first for that to even show up. But if, like for example, if you have all your text aligned center, then maybe you want your image aligned center. Another one is this responsive setting in the tooltip. So 
over in the uh, where is that in the details here just this main you know whether you're showing the tooltip or not now you can enable that or disable that per device so that's really nice next is the events filter module now the one main new feature here is we added this search criteria so when you're in the search filter right so the actual individual filter right here search there is a new option right here it says search criteria and basically it's saying do you want to have this keyword search by the title of the event only or by the title and the content of the event okay so you get to choose now which you would like the other improvements we made in here so we moved everything into this one toggle within the filter so you know as you're adding your multiple filters here right we used to have uh, another toggle here everything's inside these here and it's all in this filter all right so it's a new toggle so we have moved those settings it's something we didn't really mention in the blog post but just you know it was just another toggle here and then another one and maybe a couple others we just consolidated it all into one filter here now in the events carousel module we've added this handy no results message it's something that we had missed because you know we added it to like the events feed and it's really helpful when you don't have events you might want to say something your own way like hey sorry we don't have any events that match that criteria or whatever you want to say there now you can write your own and like we always do we always have a full change log with a lot more things that we don't mention in the blog post just because they're like fixes we usually just mention usually like new features or major improvements so one thing that's actually kind of interesting to note is we added this option to all of our modules the events feed events calendar and events page to show or hide the comma after each element in the location in fact let me show you that here in the events feed it's kind of crazy but it's we got kind of tired of people saying that in their country they did it this way and in their country it was this way and it was like hey we just add a setting after each one uh, when we say if we turn on show location then it's like show location street address and then show comma after street address show locality show comma after locality show the state or province show come after so we kind of just went all out where this like we're gonna we're gonna cover the the whole gamut here and never have a problem with someone saying it's this way or that way for their country and um, even we even added this extra one show postal code before locality because I forget um, is it Europe maybe you have to they do it that way and it's like okay and um, now we just have a setting to do that so there you go Another thing very wild, worthwhile mentioning, especially when we're talking about Europe, is over here at the admin label, there is a new feature in the events feed, the events calendar, and the events carousel that you can use locally hosted files right here. Turn that on, and that's for GDPR compliance, okay? What we do is we use... Um, a server which is a, a CDN for our JavaScript files it basically helps load them a lot faster for you it helps the performance of the plugin because you know the files that are needed for the events feed and the carousel and that calendar are all JavaScript files that need to be loaded so we offload them to a JavaScript CDN specifically for that but some people are saying well you know with this GDPR even though it's actually you know yeah, there's not really an issue with it, but made people uncomfortable. And I said, hey, we'll add a setting that you can turn on. And that way it literally adds them into your plugin. So that means they're hosted on your website. So again, the three modules that will have this, you can go in and turn that on if you're affected by that. The events feed, the events calendar, and the events carousel. Let's see, anything else worth mentioning in this change log? I mean, there's a lot of different things different fixes that we note here um, but generally that was a that was the main things so yeah we love putting these updates out and keeping the plugin um, updated and always improving we are literally always improving and taking your feature ideas and suggestions and making them reality and continuing to be um, the most popular single plugin for the Divi third party marketplace we're very excited about that we hope you continue to love it and we continue to update and support it all right, we'll see you all in our next update.